Welcome to Home and United Methodist Church, located in Los Angeles, California. We are a church that believes in the Word of God as it is manifested in Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. We believe in the Holy Bible, and we trust that there is a word of hope, instruction, and healing for us all. Thanks for joining us today, and let's journey together as we follow God. Welcome to the Holman United Methodist Church, the Church of the Bells. We are located at 3320 West Adams Boulevard in the historic West Adams District of Los Angeles. The Reverend Dr. Ken J. Walden is our senior pastor, and Reverend Louis Tillman is our associate pastor. We are pleased to be worshiping in person at 8 o'clock and 11 o'clock each Sunday morning and invite you to join with us. And good morning once again. Today is the fifth Sunday after the Epiphany, Holy Communion, February 5th, 2023. We encourage you to visit and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Type youtube.com slash Holman Church in your internet browser or you can go to YouTube directly and type Holman Church in the search box. There you will see worship services and other engaging content. We ask you to click the thumbs up button, subscribe, and then click the bell icon to receive notifications. And again, please subscribe. During these unprecedented times, we encourage you to stay safe, but also remember that churches around the world, as well as Holman, are still in need of your financial support and prayers. So we offer them for you and hope that you have a safe and blessed week. This ministry is broadcast live on radio station KJLH 102.3 in the greater Los Angeles area. You can also view it on the Holman Church YouTube channel everywhere. This provides broad outreach opportunities to the listening and viewing audience. We are grateful for this opportunity to be in ministry with the greater community through the generosity of our radio broadcast sponsors. We look forward to your support through your radio broadcast sponsorship to honor a loved one, celebrate a special occasion, or promote your business or event, call Holman Church at 323-703-5868 for more information. You can also contribute online to our ministry or other activities at holmanchurch.com. Let us partner with you in sharing your news. Thank you for listening. And we now join the church service currently in progress.
Good morning. Welcome to Home and United Methodist Church, a community of faith that strongly believes that God is still moving, God is still blessing, and God is still redeeming in our lives and in this world today. We're so thankful to see everyone in person, those watching on our YouTube channel, and those listening to us on 102.3 FM KJLH to our 11 a.m. worship experience. We're so thankful to start this season of Black History Month as we embark upon the fifth Sunday after the season of Epiphany. Let us prepare our minds, our spirits, and our hearts for what the Lord has to come. Please rise if you are able and join us in our call to worship. Good morning all, our call to worship. Happy are those who worship the Lord and delight in God's precepts. They rise before dawn as a light to the upright. They are gracious, merciful, and righteous. They shine their light, their light before, before others, others for all the world to see. They will never be moved. Let, Let this be our, our worship. worship. Let us join in worship as our home and choir leads us in singing, praise him and lift every voice. You will find it in our uh, hymnal. It's number 159.
Amen, amen. Please join me in our opening prayer. You do not desire a fast of sackcloth and ashes, but a fast of righteousness. You ask us to loose the bonds of injustice, undo the thongs of the yoke, and set the captives free. Train our hearts to do what is right, O oh God, not what is easy. May we live our days among the righteous that we may never be moved, but dwell secure in your mercy and your grace. Amen. We will now receive the Ministry of Music as our Holman Choir sings. Please, you may be seated. Our Holman Choir will be singing City Called Heaven, arranged by Josephine Polentz with Edwina Weathersby, soloist.
I invite you to stand as you are able and follow along as I read the gospel. Our scripture this morning is found in the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 5, verses 13 through 20. You are the salt of the earth, but if salt has lost its taste, how can its saltiness be restored? It is no longer good for anything, but is thrown out and trampled underfoot. You are the light of the world. A city built on a hill cannot be hid. People do not light a lamp and put it under the bushel basket. Rather, they put it on the lampstand and it gives light to all in the house. In the same way, let your light shine before others so that they may see your good works and give glory to your Father in heaven. Do not think that I have come to abolish the law or the prophets. I have come not to abolish, but to fulfill. For truly I tell you, until heaven and earth pass away, not one letter, not one stroke of a letter will pass from the law until all is accomplished. Therefore, whoever breaks one of the least of these commandments and teaches others to do the same will be called least in the kingdom of heaven. But whoever does them and teaches them will be called great in the kingdom of heaven. For I tell you, unless your righteousness exceeds that of the scribes and Pharisees, you will never enter the kingdom of heaven. The word of God for the people of God. Amen. Thanks be to God. Let us receive the ministry of music from the Holman Choir, Glorify the Lord by Sandra Crouch, after which Reverend Dr. Ken Walden will bring the message for today, Glorify God in Heaven.
Good morning. It is so good to see each and every one of you. Happy Black History Month. Yes, black is beautiful and brilliant. On this first Sunday of February of Black History Month, it is so good that we celebrate all aspects of black culture in its many, many, many dimensions in many countries, in many cultures. Um, and also, I know that many of you are celebrating a birthday during this month of February. I join you also during this month of February. My birthday is February 25th. God's blessings upon this new season of your life. And I thank God for a new season for mine. Others of you are celebrating during this month of February an anniversary of some kind, whether it's an anniversary of a relationship or anniversary of recovery, recovering from alcohol addiction or alcohol abuse, recovering from drug addiction or drug abuse, or recovering from something or someone or some place. Every person on this planet is recovering from something or someone or someplace. And we thank God for the road to recovery, however short or however long or however meandering and complex that may be. I would also like to tell you that today we are celebrating our Holy Communion and I'm happy to tell you we have easier elements for communion for those of you who are joining us on our radio and our home and YouTube channel, please take bread and juice representing the body and blood of Jesus Christ, put it on the side and all of us will be celebrating it together. I'm also happy to let you know that next Sunday, Home and United Methodist Church will be celebrating our 78th church anniversary. We thank God for 78 years, God has allowed us to focus on our mission and our vision and reflecting God's love and God's grace in this community and across the world. And next Sunday, all of you are invited. Feel free to bring a friend. We will be celebrating the entire day and really the entire year. We will be celebrating 78 years. And we do not take that for granted. Not at all. But I should tell you and encourage you to please complete your worship surveys because soon and very soon, the surveys will be offline. So please complete those worship surveys online or take a hard copy, please complete it. Because soon and very soon, the surveys will be offline and then we will start to read and assess. Speaking of assessing, our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ leads us on this day to the Gospel of Matthew, the Gospel of Matthew, the fifth chapter. I encourage you to turn your attention to the Gospel of Matthew, the fifth chapter, around the 13th verse. When Jesus, he was pretty much on his second mile of this sermon on the mount. He was looking at, we are told, through biblical historians, he had gathered at this point in his ministry a large crowd. And at the Sermon on the Mount, he was expounding upon God's word. On the Sermon on the Mount, he was looking at the audience and he was expounding upon the biblical truths of God. Uh, he was expounding upon messages that would give people life, give people hope, give people inspiration. Like you and I, we are still gathering around God's word on today. And like you and I, just like those people around 2,000 years ago, we believe that God's word, if we gather together, God's word continues to give us hope. God's words continue to give us inspiration. God's words, biblical truths, continue to be life-giving to you and I. So according to the Gospel of Matthew around the fifth chapter, around the 13th verse, Jesus tells 
those followers. You are the salt of the earth. You, you are the salt of the earth. Uh, the next verse, Jesus tells, we are informed. Jesus says, you are the light of the world. You, you are the salt of the earth. You are the light of the world. And glorify God in heaven. That is a tall order for all of us on this year of 2023 and beyond, because I think many of us would agree that the human condition, we increasingly suffer from a shortage. Many of us, we have an attention deficit. Uh, researchers tell us, and sociologists and psychologists, they have made it pretty clear that many people, not only in our country, but also in other countries, humanity, both men and women, we are finding it difficult to focus. We find that in the business world, many CEOs over and over and over, regardless of what company that we are referring to, many CEOs are complaining that their employees are finding it difficult to focus. The presidents and CEOs, they realize that many things are pulling their employees from one side to the other. Whether it's a cell phone, whether it's a computer, whether it's a, a tablet. Regardless of what it is, employees are finding it difficult to focus. Well, that phenomenon, the unfortunate phenomenon, is unfortunately eroding other aspects of our society. If we go through many doors of educational institutions, it does not matter if we're talking about elementary school, or middle school, or high school, college, even graduate school. Professors will also often complain about the lack of attention. Uh, students are being pulled from one side to another side. And again, whether it's the cell phone or the tablet or the computer, it is just very difficult for students to focus. And truth be told, we find that unfortunate phenomenon, the inability and the difficulty of people focusing on one another, we also find it in our family lives. Uh, too often when you even walk into a restaurant and you see two people or five people uh, supposedly trying to have dinner with one another, you see many of them distracted on their devices, generally their electronic devices, pulling them in one direction or another. And if we are honest with ourselves, that kind of difficulty of focusing, that kind of difficulty on concentrating, that kind of difficulty in being simply present often intrudes our spiritual lives. It often intrudes our spiritual and religious lives as it relates to our relationship with God. Jesus knew how humanity can be pulled from one side to another. Jesus, very familiar with the Torah. Jesus, very familiar with the Old Testament. Jesus, very familiar with Moses. We know that Jesus often referred to Moses time and time and time again, according to the four Gospels. Jesus must have known, according to the book of Exodus, around the 32nd chapter, how the people were following Moses, experienced freedom, yet still turned their attention into other places. So much so, according to the book of Exodus, around the 32nd chapter, we are informed that the people not only turned their attention away from God, but they started creating other gods. They started creating a golden calf. They started being persuaded and distracted according to their own devices. Be careful about those devices that we own and control. 
Be careful that those same devices do not wind up owning us and controlling us. Jesus wanted to make sure that the people knew that it was important for them to glorify God in heaven. And Jesus wanted them to know that you are the salt. You are the light. Now that is a tall order. That is a tall order because truth be told, we do not always feel like being the salt. We do not always feel like being the light. But in this journey that we live on, it is important to know that in order for us to continue to move forward in life, in order for you to continue to live a productive life, in order for you to receive and embrace all that God has for you, you must, we must take these words seriously from Jesus that you are the salt. You are the light. Salt. The salt was discovered at least around 6,000 years before the birth of Jesus Christ. Salt. Salt is a valuable substance that we have in this world. Salt. Salt is known for preserving food. Salt is known for not allowing Foods to go bad, especially meat. Salt. Salt has been on the currency, the international currency, for a very, very long time. It is salt. Jesus says that you are the salt, meaning that you can preserve joy. You can preserve love. You can preserve peace. You are the salt. Many of us know that salt is not only valuable within food and dietary restrictions, and it's an important part of our diet, but also salt is called upon when it starts a snow blizzard. Snow. Snow can shut down a small town Snow can even shut down a large city. Uh, snow can overwhelm things, so much so that as soon as it starts snowing, the town and the local officials, they make sure that they take out and get out and call out their trucks to deliver salt. Because when you put salt in the midst of a snowstorm, salt can start creating smoother paths. Snow can overwhelm and shut down cities. Have you ever felt overwhelmed? Have you ever felt that things were not going your way? Have you ever been overwhelmed by rumors? Have you ever been overwhelmed by gossip? Have you ever felt overwhelmed by lies? Have you ever felt overwhelmed by the enemy and opposition? Today is February, what's today's date? On February 5th, Hank Aaron was born. February 5th, Hank Aaron was born and the year was 1934. Hank Aaron was born in Mobile, Alabama. And Hank Aaron, around 1973, he was following his calling in life playing professional baseball. Some of you know that Hank Aaron first started out with the National Negro League, and then he was eventually recruited to play for the Major Baseball League. Some of you know that by the time that Hank Aaron retired, he was the only black player that, ever, that had ever played for the National Negro League. Some of you know that around 1973, he was facing opposition. Because around 1973, Hank Aaron had already hit 714 home runs. Babe Ruth was the one who set the record. Many people believe that no one would ever beat Babe Ruth's record. 
In 1973, Hank Aaron started receiving so many death threats. In 1973, not only Hank Aaron started receiving death threats, but even his family started receiving physical threats and assaults. Hank Aaron, in his biography and later, he talks about how he felt so overwhelmed. But in 1973, rather than giving up, he decided that he would be the salt. He talked about in 1973, in 1973, he was so scared that he had someone write his obituary just in case he was killed after beating the record. If we think about it for a moment, that fear was not exaggerated. Only a few short years ago, Martin Luther King Jr. had been assassinated. Only a few short years ago, Malcolm X had been assassinated. Only a few short years ago, President Kennedy had been assassinated. Only a few short years ago, his brother Bobby Kennedy had been assassinated. Only a short years ago, Edgar had been assassinated. Emmett Till had been assassinated. And one of the denominations, common denominators, was black men. But we know that black men and black women and other men and women who unfortunately will remain nameless have suffered from racism and poisonous actions of the enemy. Hank Aaron, in 1974, beat the record of Babe Ruth and finally hit his 715th home run because he decided to be the salt. Have you ever felt overwhelmed in your life? Has the enemy ever tried to oppose you when you were trying to move forward? Sometimes, my brothers and sisters, you will have to be the salt. You will have to preserve peace. You will have to preserve love. You will have to preserve justice. But Jesus says, you're not only the salt, but you are also the light. You are the light. See, that's what happens when we are in tune with the Lord. That is what happens when we embrace and reflect our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. That is what happens when we depend upon God, that we can become the salt and when we can become the light. And I am glad during this Black History Month that we have inherited a wonderful tradition of our foremothers and our forefathers being the salt when they did not see salt around them. I'm so glad that our foremothers and our forefathers within our black culture decided to be the light when they did not have any light around them. Some of you know Peggy Priestley. Peggy Trotter, Damon Priestley, or Damon Priestley. Some of you know that she's married to Ernie. Some of you know that Peggy Priestley, her, she is the great, great granddaughter of Ellen and Kraft and William Kraft. Peggy has been on CBS television stations. I'm talking about the national. CBS, the international news station. She's been on there because there's a new book entitled Master, Slave, Husband, Wife. An epic journey from slavery to freedom. She's being interviewed because in this book entitled Master, Slave, Husband, Wife. An epic journey from slavery to freedom. Her grandparents, they escaped slavery in 19, I'm sorry, in 1848. 
1848, they lived in the deep south. And in 1848, they escaped slavery, African-American slavery, pretending to be other persons. And they finally found themselves, made it to Canada, to freedom, made it to Boston first. And yet they still did not feel safe in Boston because during that time in 1848, there were hundreds of people, hundreds of white slave owners who would deploy people to go up north to capture slaves who had gained their freedom. Peggy Priestley's great, great, great grandparents stayed in Boston for a little while, but decided to keep on going to Canada. They stayed in Canada for a little while, but then decided to go to England. There, they stayed a little bit longer and enjoyed freedom, but they decided that it was not enough for them to have their own freedom and go about the rest of their lives, that they had to be the light for other people. My brothers and sisters, you are the salt of the earth. You are the light of the world. It is up to you. It is up to you. And my hope and prayer for all of us is that you increasingly become the salt to preserve love and to preserve peace and to preserve harmony, preserve justice. My hope and prayer is that you will increasingly become the salt and create pathways where, where situations may seem and appear that they're being overwhelmed. You are the salt to calm things down. Jesus stood up on that mount and looked at men and women, looked at boys and girls, and looked at older people and younger people and let them know that you are the ones that you've been waiting for. During this Black History Month, we can celebrate. We celebrate because we know what happens when we stay focused even in the midst of opposition. And as Hank Aaron broke the record, in 1974, we realized a lot of good things happened in 1974. Because at home in United Methodist Church, in 1974, we had our senior pastor emeritus, Reverend James Lawson, who was appointed to home in United Methodist Church. Somebody say amen. <laughs> it's always good to have Reverend Lawson with us. I have to tell you, it is not always easy being the salt. It is not always easy being the light. And it is not always easy giving God glory in heaven. Because oftentimes our heart is breaking here on earth. Sometimes it's not easy to give God glory in heaven because oftentimes we can become disappointed here on earth. That is why our hearts break for an unnecessary amount of young black men and women who have been killed by the hands of law enforcement. It is not easy to always give God the glory in heaven while we witness and experience injustices here on earth. But do not be deceived by the enemy. Do not be deceived by the enemy and, and think that earth is all that there is. We have a Lord, we have a God that sits up high and looks down low with the most loving eyes. We have a God that sits up high and looks down low with the most gracious eyes. I have to tell you, yesterday I gave the eulogy for our church member, Jamal Freeman, here in the sanctuary. And some of you know that Jamal Freeman, he was not even 40 years old, not close to it. He was only in his middle 30s. And he woke up as he 
generally does, and he was walking to the gym, and unfortunately, Jamal Freeman was hit by a car, and the car kept on going. It made local news all across California, because there's still an investiga investigation going on. Yesterday, the sanctuary was packed, and there were tributes to him. People stood up from his family. People stood up from his high school. People stood up from his college. People stood up, his brothers stood up and shared a few words. You could not only hear the numbness and the heartbreaking disappointment, but you could also feel it. What's amazing is that even in the midst of disappointment, even in the midst of being totally blindsided, the family was still able to give God glory in heaven. Even in the midst of sorrow, uh, those students and the people in the community were still able to give God glory in heaven. Even in the midst of the celebration of life, which should never occur for a mid-30-year-old person, even in the midst of that, the entire congregation was still able to give God glory in heaven. Wherever you are on your journey, whatever mountain you may be climbing, whatever valley you may be going through, you are the salt. You are the light. Whatever is going on here on earth, let's not, re let's not forget to give God glory in heaven. Because if we give God glory in heaven, many of us know that when praises go up, blessings come down. When praises go up, mercy come down. When praises go up, forgiveness come down. When praises go up, grace comes down. Some of you know that you've heard about the importance of preventive care. I, I have to tell you something. I, I'm very discriminatory with my time for a variety of reasons. And some of you know that how important it is to give a car preventive care. That's why you go to the shop. You, the shop changes your tires because the car shop doesn't want your tires to get eroded in unnecessary places. So it brings balance. Even if you think you don't need a oil change, you need to go during a recommended time to keep your car going healthy, much like our bodies. You may not be feeling bad, you may not think you need to see a doctor, but preventive health care. It's good to see what's going on with your heart and your pulse and your blood pressure. Preventive care is the best care. I would suggest to you on this day, the same thing happens in our spiritual lives. Preventive praise. I've learned to praise God for not only what God has done, but what God is doing and for what God will do. I've learned to thank God in advance. I've learned to say hallelujah anyhow, because just like preventive car care, preventive health care, I am doing a preventive spiritual care. So when the hallways and when the pathways get dark, I can still be the salt. Uh, when the road gets a little rocky and I don't know where to go, I can still be the light. Not only for myself, but for others around me. So my hope and prayer for all of you, that you will increasingly be the salt. You will increasingly be the light for your family, for your community, forever and always. And the church says, amen. Please stand. We are going to stand. We're standing and creating an altar right where we are. It's important for us as people of faith to know how to create an altar wherever we are. 
I invite for those of you on who's listening to the radio and, and on our home and YouTube, wherever you may be, stand if you're able and create an altar right where you are. It's important for us to know how to glorify God, how to praise God in any situation, in any place, during any circumstance. And let us pray right now. Eternal God, we stand. Lord, we stand in agreement that we will be falling down without your power and your presence. Lord, we stand. We stand in unison, realizing that we need you. We love you. We trust you. Lord, we stand on your promises today. We stand on your word. We stand on your mercy. We stand on your grace. Lord, right now, in the name of Jesus, we thank God during this Black History Month for our foremothers and our forefathers who stood up on your word. And they were determined to be the salt when they did not have salt around them. We thank God, blessings upon our elders and our ancestors, our foremothers and forefathers who stood up, who was de determined to be the light when they did not have light around them. Blessings upon their spirits and souls. So now, Lord, in the name of Jesus, we claim victory. We claim healing. We claim productivity. We claim your power and your presence in our lives, in our homes, on our jobs, in our communities, on our streets. Lord, we stand knowing that the only reason that we can stand is because you are standing with us. In the name of the Father, Son, Holy Spirit, we pray in Jesus' name. And the church says, Amen. Amen. You may be seated. When you come up to the altar for communion, this element will be easier. On one side, you will have the bread and you will open as instructed. Then you will flip it over and on the other side, you will have the wine, which will be a lot easier and you will open it as instructed. <laughs> Before we get to that point, please open up your hymnals to page 13. Your red hymnals, we will start at page 13. Under the great thanksgiving, and you will find these words, the Lord be with you. Amen. Lift up your hearts. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. And so with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy are you, and blessed is your Son, Jesus Christ. By the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church, delivered us from slavery to sin and death, and made with us a new covenant by water and the Holy Spirit. On the night in which Jesus gave himself up for us, Jesus took bread, gave thanks to you, broke the bread, gave it to his disciples, and said, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When the supper was over, Jesus took the cup, gave thanks to you, gave it to his disciples and said, drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. 
do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so in remembrance of these mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Jesus Christ offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here today at home in United Methodist Church and beyond, and pour out your Holy Spirit on these gifts of bread and wine. Make them be for us the body and blood of Jesus Christ, that we may be for the entire world the body of Jesus Christ, redeemed by his blood. By your Holy Spirit, make us one with Jesus Christ. By your Holy Spirit, make us one with each other. In ministry, one in ministry to the entire world until Jesus Christ comes in final victory and we feast at his heavenly banquet through your son Jesus Christ with the Holy Spirit in your holy church. All honor and glory is yours, almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Let us say the prayer that the Lord taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not in temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thy is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. You will now be instructed by the ushers and the church leaders to come up front. For you are welcome in this place. There is room at the table. The table is spread, and the feast of the Lord is going on. Come to the altar, kneel as you are able. Please pick up the element, open the top, where the bread. For this is the bread representing Jesus' broken body for us. Let us eat. Let's turn the cup around. Over, open, this is the blood of Jesus Christ shed for us, let us take with great thanksgiving. Go in peace, for you are loved, you are forgiven, you are redeemed by God. Go in peace. You are loved, you are forgiven. Please come to the altar. 
as you are able. Please kneel as you are able. Open the top for bread. Kneel as you are able. Let us take the bread, the bread broken for us. We take the bread with great thanksgiving in our hearts. Then we flip over the cup. We open the wine. We take the juice representing Jesus' blood. Go in peace, for you are loved, you are forgiven, you are redeemed, you are a child of God. Please come to the altar where the table is spread. Please kneel, open up the top portion for the bread. For this is the bread representing the body broken for us. Let's take with great thanksgiving in our hearts. After we eat the bread, let's turn it over and open up the juice. The juice representing the blood of Jesus Christ shed for us. Let us take with great thanksgiving in our hearts. Go in peace, for you are loved. You are redeemed. Go in peace. You are a child of God. You are forgiven. Let us pray. Eternal God, thank you for never losing your power. Thank you for never losing your grace. Thank you for never losing your mercy. Thank you, Lord, for allowing us to be the salt, to be the light. Thank you, Lord, for allowing us to come at your table. Thank you, Lord, for allowing us to celebrate Black History Month. Thank you, Lord, for allowing us to celebrate our relationship with you. Amen. Amen. Now allow us to turn our attention to further announcements, open up our ears, our eyes, our hearts, and our calendars. Our announcements. Please remember in prayer, James Dantzler, 
Claudette DeWitty, Brandon Duhone, Barbara Glass, Omega Lane, Travis and Paula Marshall, Dr. Benny Reams and family, Connie Thomas, Teresa <clears throat> Thomas, Everett Williams, Angel Wilson, and her mother. Also, please let your light shine. The Sunday School Lesson for Children is available on our Holman website. Families are encouraged to share the lesson with their children. And please do remember to connect with us to learn about opportunities to engage in ministry as we gather, grow, serve, and live the gospel of Jesus Christ. We thank you for your partnership in, in ministry. God bless you. We will now have our choral benediction. Love it, please rise if you are able. And receive the benediction. Now may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord's face shine upon you and be gracious to you. And may the Lord look upon you with favor and grant you peace. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We hope that you have enjoyed our broadcast today and that it met a spiritual need in your life. If it was helpful, you can support this radio ministry by donating online at holmanchurch.com or by calling the church office at 323-703-5868. Again, that's 323 703 5868 or online at holmanchurch.com. That's H O L M A N holmanchurch.com. Holman Church is located at 3320 West Adams Boulevard, 
That's Adams Boulevard and 4th Avenue in the historic West Adams District of Los Angeles. We wish God's blessing on you to have a wonderful week and thank you for sharing this time with the Holman United Methodist Church on radio station KJLH 102.3 FM and everywhere on the internet via the Holman Church YouTube channel. Remember, you can contribute and find out more about us at holmanchurch.com. We hope to hear from you and see you soon. Yeah,